Good morning, church. For the first time in 20 years, I am contemplating the purchase of a suit. Anyway, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about John chapter 11. There's this passage in John chapter 11 that almost all of us are familiar with. It's the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. I talked about it on Sunday morning just a few cu- just a couple months ago during the fall, when we were talking about Jesus being sometimes a disappointing character in people's lives. But anyway, we today are going to look at the passage that follows the Lazarus resurrection story. See, at the end of the story, right after Lazarus has been raised from the dead, we hear that a number of Jews have put their faith in Jesus, but not all of them. Some of them have decided to do something different. We pick up the story in John chapter 11, verse 45 through 50. Verse 45 says, Therefore many of the Jews who'd come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him, but some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. See, anytime we face a difficulty, anytime we face something surprising, anytime we face something that goes beyond our normal way of thinking, there are few people who put their faith more firmly in God, and there are few people who then reject the new thing and go more firmly to the old thing. This is the way humans have always been. I mean, we face it all the time, especially right now, as all of us are dealing with this weird coronavirus stuff. There are a few of us who put our faith more firmly in God because of these uncertain times, and there are a few of us who have decided to maybe revert to old patterns, old habits, old systems of belief, or whatever. And, and what it does is it makes it very difficult for us to accept the new thing that God is really doing. Because those people who followed Jesus after he rose Lazarus from the dead weren't necessarily thinking that Jesus was going to die. They were people who just were following the miracle worker. And the big truth is that we always get Jesus wrong. Whenever we have our expectations of him or our understanding of him, we always get it wrong because he is God in the flesh. And if you think about trying to understand God, that's almost impossible. And if you think about trying to understand human beings, that's almost impossible. So if you try to think about God somehow also being a human being, that is just way beyond our imagination. We can't strategize what his plans really are. And so here's the deal. We always fall more in line with our own way of thinking than with Jesus himself. And I want to encourage you to try to pay attention to Jesus himself. But anyway, let's move on. What happens then is exactly the same thing that all of us would do in the same circumstance. Verse 47, the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. They said, let's get all the leaders together. Let's talk about this thing. Let's try to understand what's going on. And here is what they said. What are we accomplishing, they asked. Here is this man performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Now, there are a lot of people who view the Pharisees and the chief priests at Jesus' day as being people who are hungry for power, people who wanted to preserve their own power, and granted, that's probably part of the story. But there's something bigger going on here, and I think it's pretty profound. They say, if we let Jesus continue going on like this, everyone will believe in him. People read that as if to say that they feel threatened themselves personally, that Jesus is going to take their followers away. Listen, I don't think that's the problem. I don't think that's the problem because they've had many times when some prophet type person or or teacher or or new way of thinking has come along the scenes and people kind of follow that person for a little bit of time, but then they always come back. And even right now, the Sanhedrin is made up of both Pharisees and Sadducees and chief priests. They're all coming from different perspectives, and yet they're coming together at this time to try to deal with the Jesus problem. I don't really think they're worried about losing some of their followers because, see, they explain right after this what they're really worried about. They say, if people believe in Jesus, then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Their big problem is not they're afraid of Jesus taking their followers. They're afraid of the Romans taking away their society. You see, 
If Jesus gets too popular, the Romans are going to feel threatened. And the Romans will come and they will say, okay, Jewish people, it's time we end all of this. Up until this point in time, the Jews had been given quite a bit of freedom. They'd been given quite a bit of opportunity to just follow their religion the way they wanted to follow it. Because, see, the Romans just didn't want all the problems that the Jews brought up whenever their society was hindered in any way. But what I find interesting here is something we talked about on Sunday. Fear. Fear was motivating a bunch of people who saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead and they didn't know what to do with it. So in fear, they went to the Pharisees. In fear, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests, the whole Sanhedrin got together to talk about what they should do. We know it's fear because they express their fear. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And if people believe in him, then the Romans will come. Why would the Romans come? Because they're afraid of a Jewish uprising. Why would the Pharisees not want Jesus to continue? Because they're afraid of the Romans being afraid of the Jewish uprising. Man, this is our problem. We face uncertainty and we shift ourselves towards fear and we think, what's the worst that could happen? We imagine the worst that could happen and then we imagine it happening and then we take actions against the worst possible outcome and not actions against the actual reality. Well, one person speaks up at the Sanhedrin. And ironically, he is the high priest, Caiaphas, the one who later determines Jesus needs to be killed. He says this, verse 49. Then one of them named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. See, they're afraid the entire nation is going to perish at the hands of the Romans. And so they decide that Jesus is going to have to become their sacrificial lamb. Jesus is going to have to die so that the Romans leave them alone for another couple of years. The irony, of course, is that Jesus is the sacrificial lamb. Jesus is the one who would die for the whole nation. And not just for the nation, but for the entire world. So Caiaphas spoke the truth. Jesus really was going to be the sacrificial lamb to die for not just the people of Israel, but for the people of the whole world, for you and for me. Our problem is that we let fear drive us to the old while Jesus is calling us to the new. We let fear drive us back to the old way of thinking, old way of doing. We let fear push us back to rules and regulations and, and places of tradition so that we can feel more comfortable. But what we need to do is let the reality of Jesus drive us more towards him, what he calls us to. And I believe in that process, we will find more joy anyway. Friends, I don't know exactly how you're feeling right now. But it is highly likely that you are going to be feeling some fear. We talked about this on Sunday. And my encouragement to you is don't allow fear to drive you to old patterns of thinking, old patterns of doing, even old patterns of believing. Let your fear drive you more towards Jesus, the one who has the power over all kinds of fear. Put your faith directly in him. And if you're uncertain about how Jesus would handle a thing, if you're uncertain about what it means to put your faith directly in him, then I invite you, just go to him. Spend some time with him reading his word. Spend some time with him in prayer. Spend some time with him having a conversation with someone who knows him better than you. But I'll tell you what, you no longer need to let fear push you towards the past because you have a Jesus you have a Jesus who has done the thing that no one could have predicted. And he's carrying us towards the future. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I ask today that you would help us to be people who don't consistently look backwards, but who consistently look forward. Lord, we don't need the nostalgia. We don't need the old traditions uh, to be our comfort zone. What we need is you. And Lord, where those 
old traditions might have pushed us towards you. That's a great thing. But Lord, really, it's all just about you. So Jesus, help us to draw close to you today above all other things. And we'll, we'll experience the joy of knowing you as we do so. Jesus, these are things that we ask from you. We ask from the Heavenly Father in your name. Amen. I want to encourage you to have a great day. Let your fear and your worry subside as you gaze more fully and completely at the Jesus who takes us towards a glorious future. God bless you.